Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Nice to have you along and uh, welcome to our DSTV viewers. And we now know that you've had a little bit of a taste of what Cape Rugby TV is about here in um, Cape Town. And uh, we trust that you're starting to enjoy Western Province Rugby closer to home. We know that there are lots of uh, Western Province Rugby fans out there around the country, especially when watching some of the matches. We, we look at Ellis Park or Loftus or wherever we see the guys wearing the blue and white hoops. So those of you that are looking for a flavor of home, so to speak, well, here you go, especially in the rugby space. Well, my normal panel with me this evening, uh, Morgan Newman. Hello, Morgs. How's it, Japes? How are you doing? It's good to be, uh, good to be on the show again and now DSTV. So looking forward to the next few episodes. And uh, Mr. H, how are you? Very good, Happy. Very lekker om to see that there are so many people who are aware of VP rugby. Yeah. And club rugby as well. And I had a lot of people who were from people who were the first time they were seen. And they were very surprised by what happened. So. Yeah, now I must say, um, obviously, uh, our first show went out uh, only on repeat um, on Saturday. And as many people watching on the repeat as they, as they did on, on, on the Wednesday night. But of course, uh, tonight is our first official night on DSTV. So if you're out there, uh, welcome. Um, and of course, you're still uh, in, on terrestrial as well, channel uh, 32 and channel 67, if you want to tell your friends who don't have DSTV in the uh, Cape Town area. Just remember, point your aerial at the Tigerberg transmitter. Anyway, this uh, coming weekend, uh, there's still a lot of rugby action, so we're not going to go away from that. Just of course, uh, Western Province Rugby uh, playing in the uh, semi-finals at Newlands um, against the Lions and uh, hopefully going to get themselves a, uh, a home final, but a home semi-final for Province, so they must be happy with that. Morgs. Yeah, no, they definitely must be. I mean, it's, uh, it's a home semi and a possible final. So, yeah, we, we don't really care what the, what the other results, how the other results pan out. As long as Western Province win, then we guarantee the home final. So, it, it's a good, exciting two weeks coming up. Did you, um, when you were playing for, for Province, did you uh, get into semis or semifinals? Yeah, I've got, uh, like I said a few weeks back, I don't have the fondest memories of a semifinal. I did my knee ligaments uh, against the Bulls. So, uh, thankfully, the Bulls are not playing in this semifinal this time, right? But yeah, I mean, look, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. A packed house at Newlands is always something that that's special to you know, that's special to anyone in Cape Town. So, I mean, the guys the guys are prepared nicely, and as long as the weather stays as it has been, um, it's gonna be an exciting weekend. Talking about the Bulls and Western Province, that combo. Um, you say you did your knee in the the last time you you played for Province against the Bulls at Newlands. Yeah, I did my knee um, the, la the last time. I know where you get. I know where you're going with that. So yeah, I did my knee against um, against the Bulls the last time I played at Newlands. And yeah, we all like. Uh, I know where you're heading with this. Okay, in well, terms then of, let uh, me take over. Then <laughs> let me take over. So so you're playing against the Bulls at Newlands uh, this coming Saturday for the Emerging Western Province team. Yeah, <laughs> the Emerging Western Province team are playing in the final of the amateur tournament at uh, 9:45. So it's a, it's a, taking me back to my school days. But at 9:45 at Newlands, so. I'm just, look, I mean, I'm not really care, I'm not really worried who the opposition is. I'm just excited to run out to, again, Newlands again for the first time in, in three years. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Lekker, yeah. <laughs> Mr. H, <laughs> hey, lach, lekker breed. The only thing that, you know, that will keep him away, hopefully from injury, is the time difference. That time he played <laughs> in the main game. Now he's playing in an early curtain racer. Yeah, what are they playing? Because there's another game after this, you know, the under-21 is also playing semi-final. So th there's a lot of action in Newlands this weekend, yeah. but of course a lot of action outside of Newlands as well. Um, the uh, the Villagers Super 7s, that'll be taking place um, on the same Saturday and I think they're going to have up a big screen. So why not get down to Villagers um, this weekend and check out the Super 7s? I think there's 32 odd teams taking place, but we'll talk to you more about the Villagers Super 7s a little bit later. Of course the Cape Rugby TV team has also got a TV, uh, uh, I mean at least has got a, a, sh a team in the seven so we're very excited to announce our squad <laughs> tonight so we'll talk to you about that in a sec but this weekend um you might think that western Province rugby leagues have finished well yes the leagues have finished but the pal guys who of course sit in the separate regions still have to finish their knockout um a, a tournament so to speak is to determine within their own little tournament who the top team is in the pal so even though you had a league winner being lower pal in the pal region um vineyards was up against them in the knockout tournament and we got out there over the weekend and uh, caught up with the uh, players and uh, the, the two teams as they battled it out at Forest Street. Let's check out some of the highlights.
Lots of action happening in the Pal region, and congratulations there to uh, Vineyards who pulled one off over Lower Pal. And I think uh, Lower Pal have been the champions for a while now, Mustache. Yeah, no, for two years uh, Lower Pal won the league there, mm. so one would ex you, you would have expected it. But knockouts is different games, you know. Anything happens. So yeah, I mean, I must say I wasn't really impressed with uh, the rugby on the day. I thought it was difficult conditions. The wind was blowing. The referee was blowing the game off every five seconds. I thought he was whistle happy. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, um, it, 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 the games do tend to change when you get to finals and, and, and close yeah, games. Yeah, like that. that is so, yeah. We, I mean, we'll see on Saturday also, you know, different approaches, safe rugby. And uh, I don't always agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Play when your natural game. When does it change, Moss? Yeah, and like Mr. H said, I think it's, you know, knockout stages is, is it's no more of the bonus points no longer come into play. And whether you win by one point or whether you win by 20, it makes no difference, you know. And I think, we'll, like Mr. H says, you'll see it on, you'll see it on Saturday. And, and we saw it the weekend, you know. I mean, uh, you sort of every, you go for penalties, you know. Any, anything in kicking range, they, go for, they, they take the chance and they go for the three points because, you know, that in the end of the game, by the last five, ten minutes, then it really gets a bit tight. So Yeah, I mean, they, they were going for, for kicks from... Ridiculous distances. Yeah, I mean, the wind was blowing. <laughs> the wind was howling into the poor fly off's um, I mean, face, and he just kept going for poles. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. But <laughs> I think, think uh, Mornay Stain wasn't even going to put up some of those <laughs> yeah, yeah, slots yeah. <laughs> like from, from long distances out. Anyway, uh, the spoils did go to um, Vineyards, but before we spoke to the coach and captain from Vineyards, we managed to catch up with the uh, losing captain and coach. Always a loser on the day in terms of the points, but uh, from a rugby perspective, uh, winner on both sides. So let's catch up there with the losing captain and coach uh, from Lower Park. Folks, it doesn't always go the way of, uh, well, we can almost say the home team, but today was neutral ground here in Paul. The losing coach for uh, Lower Paul didn't go your way, but it was very close. Very close indeed, my friend. Um, I just want to congratulate um, Peanuts on the uh, very good performance. Uh, for my boys, uh, we need to come out again. We had a good season. Um, to win 23 out of 25 games for the season is excellent. So for Vineyards, they want to win today, we can see. And to do it with 14 men, brilliant stuff. So my guys need to go back to the, uh, to the blackboard for next year and we need to do better. You've had a fantastic season though. We, from Cape Rugby TV point of view, we've been watching your progress all the way through the season. Both teams are having a, a fantastic performance. You must be very proud of the boys. I'm very proud of the boys and it's always difficult playing against Vineyards. And, um, we know we need to do it. We are not best on that particular day. So it, today didn't work out for us. It didn't work out for you, but still, I think the most important thing is community rugby, player spirit and participation. And it looks like you've got all three of those things in place. Very well. Indeed, uh, indeed. Um, um, the, our community rugby is, is just picking up. And we hope that we just will grow bigger and bigger. As you can see, our junior structure is well in place. And we hope it, we can take it further from you onwards. Well, then we can only say congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, with me is Oswald Thomas, he's the captain of Lower Paul. Oswald, uh, did you end the game today? But it was a close game. Yeah, it was very close. It was your fault. It was a bit of a lot of fun, but not a man. Well done to Vineyards. Are you still in the season for you? Yeah, it's a little bit of league champs, three years after each other. It's not a pity that we see the league can be good at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, we don't want to see the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so the losing captain and coach there, but still very proud. It was a good, uh, a good season for them. Um, they, they, they can't. They got no reason to be upset. I mean, I know that they, they weren't crowned the sort of the tournament, but they, they took the league. They yeah, took no, they, 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 they traditionally known as Blues. Yeah, and they, they've been a, the, you know, they've been a strong team in Nepal area for years, and well, so has Vineyard's been, you know. Yeah, Vineyard's just produced seven or eight uh, Springboks out of the Murat family alone. Yeah, talking about the Murat family, in fact, um, uh, the captain of um, Vineyards had to uh, step to the side of the field. He got injured in the last minute, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
um, but uh, that, that was of course uh, Suleiman um, Antwa who, uh, who got injured and the vice captain um, Shukri Murat as Mr. H was saying Shukri Murat stood in for him as well as of course as Nasif Abrams the uh, winning coach and captain let's hear what those boys have to say <laughs> Folks, it is finally that time of the year where we know who the Paul League winners are. This is the winners, of course, of the Paul Knockout Tournament. And um, the main leagues in Western Province are done. But in the Paul region, of course, they finally have to find out who the ultimate winner is of these teams in the Paul region. With me is uh, Shukri Murat. Shukri is, of course, the vice captain of uh, Vineyards. Shukri, a good result for you guys today. Yeah, brilliant result. We didn't expect this. We were by far the underdogs. We had at least four of our players injured. And we, we just dug dig deep and we played with 14 men and I basically don't have words anymore to say. It's been unbelievable, unbelievable experience. Well, you're going to have to say a few words because your okay. captain, of course, who's uh, unfortunately injured in the last, uh, in the dying seconds of the match there, who had a fantastic game, is also incidentally our man of the match, Suleiman. Um, he's, he's been inspirational. Yeah, throughout this year, he's been the one man that's been there at every practice, every match. He's given it absolutely everything and from um, I shouldn't be speaking here, it should be him he's been our inspiration the whole year we'd like to thank him from the whole team the whole club he's been the one guy that everyone could look up to so thank you Suleiman yeah, well we are going to try and catch up with him we're going to get him to just uh, take a bit of a breather and of course it's important that he thinks of his his safety first after after getting injured but um, from a from a team point of view the boys are happy yeah well we just stuck to the basics eh? and we knew if we stick to the basics and our defense was key as long as we all made our first time tackles and we each gave 110% when we played with 14 men, we would pull it through. And knowing that our under 14 side, under 16 side, under 18 and the senior sides all won today. So it's a brilliant year for the club. Well, Shukri from a Cape Rugby TV point of view, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Folks, the coach of the uh, Vineyards uh, rugby team here in the Paul region. Of course, it is the Paul Knockout Tournament. And finally, we have a winner, Nasif Abrams. Nasif, fantastic game with you guys today. Thank you, JP. Um, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking Blues for the great game of rugby. At the end of the day, rugby was the winner. You must be thrilled with the performance. I mean, the entire season you guys have done extremely well. Yes, I mean, uh, we've put in a lot, a lot of hard work throughout the season. At the end of the day, you know, we've got the reward. So Shukri Murat there as well as um, uh, Nasif Abrams and they must be happy with their uh, performance. The Murat family of course goes deep in, uh, in the, in the uh, rugby ranks in Western Province. Uh, Mr. H, we've, we've seen quite a lot of them around. Yeah, no, they, they've been around for a long time in the early Saru days, Federation days, you know, that family comes a long way. Long yeah, way. yeah. I think if, if they put all those who earn Springbok national colours on, you know, then they can fill a whole team. Fill a whole squad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and of course, uh, we managed to catch up there with the man of the match, folks. Now, the man of the match, this time we had to do it a little bit differently. So, look at the next clip with a little bit of um, patience and a little bit of sympathy. Um, Suleiman Antar was the captain of Vineyards and, uh, of course, he was also the Evox Advanced Nutrition Man of the match. Now, Evox is the uh, official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Now, Suleiman was unable to make the interview and we managed to catch up with him when we found out that he was still in the change room. So it's a little bit echoey and uh, nevertheless, we sneaked in there and went to surprise him. We hope you enjoy this clip and uh, appreciate the, the, the sort of sense of guts and determination that this young man had on the field. Check it out. <laughs> Hi folks, we've just uh, finished the game here, Lower Paul against the Vineyards, of course, uh, Vineyards came out as the winner. And um, Suleiman Antar was the man of the match. He got injured and wasn't able to come onto the post-match interview. But we've just spotted him in the change room. So we're going to go and surprise him and give him the Evox 1000 Rand check, man of the match. He's injured, so be patient with us. Come follow me. Okay, we're going to come on in here. Suleiman. You can see Suleiman is really under major injury here. But nevertheless, we're going to try and put a small smile on his, on his face. So, Layman, this is the 1,000 Rand check for you. And I see you've got your trophy as well. I bet you would my sack that for a thousand Rand. You don't know how to do it. Come on, sit down here. There you go. That's a thousand Rand. I'll grab that for you. And congratulations. Your team was speaking very highly of you. We just had Shukri on the, on the, on the show, on the interview. And you were saying that you led the team with aplomb through the whole year. So. My well, man, I know it's a difficult time for you right now. You've got an injury, but at least maybe this thousand bucks will put a smile on your face. Yeah, yeah. I'm 
but I just want to say the thanks for the team, everyone, and the major game, everyone, see. And the whole thing is, so even before the game, I, I just told everyone, just break something today. They give you all, and if, if you break something, you knew you give you all. And unfortunately, I'm the one, as you can see, unfortunately, I got injured, but it's all been here to the team, and it's all worth it. Thanks. Listen, you are kind of spirit. I'm going to shake your hands and we're going to leave you alone. Okay, and I think you've done a fantastic job. We'll catch you on Cap Rugby TV. Thanks. Folks, giving it all for Club Rugby and what a captain. Vinyas, captain. Thanks. And I think he needs big applause. So if you're out there and you're watching TV right now, in your chair, make sure that you remember this name. Salam and Anta. There you go, folks. Suleiman Antar and uh, injured. He did his knee in the dying seconds of the game. Vineyards against Lower Pole. Um, Morgz, he was in serious agony. I mean, he tried to come out for the for the man of the match interview. I know the fans sort of dragged him out, but he really should have been on on a gurney. Yeah, no, he wasn't a he wasn't a stretcher, and then he tried to get off the stretcher to come and do the interview. But obviously, you know, knees is up in there, and it's 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 not a pain that you can easily endure. So. Um, I wish him all the best, and I'm sure that he'll be back next season. You know, thankfully it happens in the last game when he's got another what three, four months to recover before preseason. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll be back. But yeah, he played, he played out of his socks, and he really, you know, deserves the man of the match. Well, we did find out. Uh, we checked up on him um, on on uh, Monday, and uh, fortunately, it's just a sprain, so he hasn't torn the, the ligaments completely. But Mr. H, what he said, I don't know if you heard it in the clip. There was he said to the team, "Look, um, when you go out today, break something." <laughs> I, don't if, I don't know if he meant um, break, uh, you know, the opponents, but break a bone and you would have given 100%. So maybe that's the kind of spirit you want. Yeah, well, he, he must be a very good captain because, you know, he's been there for a while and Vinyat has been amongst the top teams there in Nepal. So yeah. uh, good for him. So well done to the guys from Paul. Then the, the, and of course, uh, finally, the guys had to get the trophy. This was the moment they were all waiting for. Mario Williams is the chairman of the Paul region. And the, the trophy is what they were waiting for the entire day. And the fans came out to see the, the handover. And of course, the, 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 the fans were thrilled. At least the Vineyards fans were thrilled with the fact that they walk away with the glory. Let's, uh, let's see what happened. <laughs> Folks, we finally have a winner in the Paul region. It is the Paul Knockout Tournament, and the chairman of the Paul region, Mr. Mario Williams, is about to hand over the trophy. Mario, you must be uh, uh, very proud of the boys and uh, seen some excellent rugby this season. Yeah, over the, the past two weeks uh, with this knockout tournament, excellent skills, excellent uh, rugby that we have seen uh, from all the clubs, and well done to Vineyards for achieving uh, this great uh, honours uh, in, in winning the, the knockout tournament. And uh, it's well deserved. Okay, folks. Well, let's get on with the procedure. We hand over to Gary. Gary, before you hand it over, yeah, um, what did you think of the performance today? Well, I enjoyed the match. I mean, to sit in the crowd once again and amongst the community it was a great experience. The game seesawed quite a lot. Uh, you, you weren't really sure who was going to win. And I think Vineyards did great in the last 20, 20 minutes to get back into the lead and eventually take the cup. And the Paul region in general, are you, are you happy with the future of where it's going? Well, definitely you could see the excitement today on the, on, the, on, on the stand, especially communities from all over Paul being here, supporting community rugby, and that's great. Well, I'm going to let you um, uh, uh, do the honours without uh, holding it up any further. I know that this gentleman is very keen to get this trophy. Let me bring Mario in there. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so congratulations to Vineyards and that uh, draws a uh, close to the connection to the league tournaments and league fixtures of the Western Province Club rugby season. But the fixtures do continue when we finish, uh, or at least when we come back after the break, we're going to tell you about the Western Province Sevens that is currently happening at various locations around, uh, around Western Province. And of course the Villagers uh, Super Sevens that's taking place this Saturday at Villagers starting about half past nine. Don't forget there's a Cape Rugby TV team that's been entered. And tonight we're going to announce that uh, Cape Rugby TV team. And uh, you're going to be surprised at some of the names that we're entering. It's going to be very exciting. It's going to be lots of fun. We'll, be get, uh, <laughs> we'll catch up with you guys straight after the break. I'm Ibn Etzebet. I'm playing for Stormers and you're watching Cape Rugby TV. <laughs> So the Western Romans Club Rugby Sevens continues to roll out. City Park is the location for the uh, T20 
teams this weekend. Of course, we're not going to go through all the fixtures, but the teams kick off at 6.30. Look out there for Helderberg Temperance taking each other on, as well, of course, the women's team opening up the fixtures. While at uh, Belleville, we'll see the Titans take on the Progress RFC, and Yester Review takes on Allendale, also kicking off at 6.30. So lots of fixtures there, and they run through to 25 to 9. The other set of sevens that's happening this weekend is the Villagers Super Sevens that's going to be taking place at Villagers. And lots of action taking place there. It's the Super Sevens Rugby Tournament, the Saturday 19th. And of course, that's in Lansdowne Road if you haven't been there. Kickoff is at 11, uh, at, le at least at 10 o'clock. And that uh, is the Super 7s with a Cape Rugby TV team in the mix. Let's take a look at our squad. This is the Cape Rugby TV squad. Very exciting. We've got Morgan Newman um, on the, in, in the team there. Yanni Duplessis, Sean De Yaga, Anthony Small, Terry Jacobs, Zahir Island, Shane Velander, Sinetemba Mapakwa, Vivian Fredericks, Mikhail Hartley, Luca Del Fante, Egan Seconds is still to be confirmed. And in the coaching staff is Ismail Dolly, Paul Delport and A.D. Jacobs. So that's a very exciting team. Morgs, from a, from a seventh point of view, um, first of all, if you're playing in the emerging Western Province team at Newlands uh, in the morning, and then you're going to come catch up and have some social sevens? Yeah, thankfully our fixtures only kick off at 12:20. Uh, tw so yeah, I've got a quarter to ten. I'll be I'll be <laughs> out of there by 12 o'clock, and I'll be on the field at Villages um, at uh, 20 past 12. So I'm excited and looking forward to it. So now this is the Cape Rugby TV squad, okay, that we've now entered. Um, so this is quite a big one for us this is like it's a cape rugby tv's almost like first social engagement we've never really done this so, so this is very exciting so let, let me ask you about some of these these players i mean we know who you are you played for the stormers you played for the Springboks. you played for western province so morgan newman we, we can put a tick mark next to him because obviously everyone knows yanni duplessis i take it this is not the uh the Springbok yanni duplessis <laughs> <laughs> no, no this is not the prop he's, uh, he's in he's in durban at the moment <laughs> playing in the semi-final for the sharks but that's yanni duplessis he's played western played for western province in the vodacom cup before also represented Western Province at um, Sevens. So, yeah, he's one of my, one of my secret recruits and, and he, he's still playing Hamilton. He plays outside Centre for Hamilton at the moment. So, he's fit and ready to go. Sean De Yaga? Sean De Yaga is actually, um, he also played Hamilton's first side for years. He's one of our senior members of the squad. And he's been around for, I mean, he's played over 100 games for Hamilton's and he's been around for years. So, he's, he's looking there to, you know, just fill, fill every gap. He's, he's a quick guy and he's, um, he's quick and he's skillful and he's a big, and he's big. So, He's there to cover all different positions. And then, of course, um, Anthony Small. Anthony Small is a scrum off. He's, um, he played at Stellenbosch for, uh, for, for a few years and now, now this year moved across to Hamilton's. And yeah, we need, we need two scrum offs. So he's one of the two scrum offs in the squad and he's one of the fit guys that'll, that'll you know, keep, uh, keep, the, keep, the older guys, keep the older guys going in, during the tough times. Terry Jacobs? Terry Jacobs speaks for himself, I think. He's a Vodacom Cup player also, played for Western Province in the Vodacom Cup. Also, I think he's traveled and played somewhere else in, in South Africa and now currently playing wing for Hamilton's. Zaire Rylands, otherwise known as Kakalaki. Kakalaki needs no inter introduction. He's, I think he was one of the highest try scorers in the Curry Cup. I think he still currently holds a record for the amount of most tries in the Curry Cup. And um, yeah, plays, currently plays wing for SK Warmers and he's dusting off his boots and going to come and right. dominate. Sini Temba Mapakwa. Sinetemba is actually currently training with the Curry Cup squad. He's um, training with, with Alistair in the Curry Cup squad and he's playing for the, he plays wing for the emerging Western Province side and also for Balha. So he's one of our, um, one of our prized possessions, so to speak. <laughs> All right. um, Vivian Fredericks. Vivian Fredericks plays fullback for hands and hearts and extremely quick and skillful and he's uh, really going to be an asset to the side. He's also playing for the hands and hearts in the sevens, uh, in the Western Province sevens. Mikhail Hartley. Mikhail Hartley plays for Western Province Sevens. He played. Um, uh, he's currently outside centre for SK Warmers, <laughs> and uh, we look forward to having him in the side. Luca Del Fonte. Luca Del Fonte plays third team fullback for um, for Hamilton's. One of the fitter guys in the squad, and also he's just he just announced his retirement. But he's dusting off the boots, and he'll be he'll be representing with the fitness and keeping things you know keeping things tight at the back um, when it comes to to fitness and, and strength. And then, um, okay, so now this one we don't really know of. Egan Seconds, I see you wrote there, to be confirmed. Egan Seconds is taking a little bit of convincing. He, um, he, he's, he's to and fro with regards to playing. But um, yeah, I think he'll, he'll do well and he'll, I'm sure he'll, um, he'll, he'll, he'll um, when time comes, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll take out the boots and, and definitely um, make up our, our 12th member of the squad. And then finally, the coaching staff. Um, I'm going to ask you anyway, Ishmael Dolly. Ishmael Dolly needs no introduction. <laughs> He's a member of the Cape Rugby TV panel, so to speak. He's also coaching the Dizers at the moment. 
And, and uh, let's yeah, stop you right there. We all know Ishmael Dolly is, of course, he's been on the show. <laughs> he's currently coaching the Dyers. All right. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of the coaching staff, uh, he has a name. For, for This is for the Cape Rugby TV 7s. I'm not really sure who this guy is. Paul Delport. Yeah, look, Paul Delport, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know what SA Rugby I have to say about it, but I might convince him to not to, to drop his coaching uh, coaching hat and put on some boots and come and play. He's still currently part of the SA7, so So we got So we've got an SA7s player in, in, the, in the Cape Rugby TV uh, team. And then A.D. Jacobs? A.D. Jacobs also, I think he's played for the Springbok 7s. He's played for the Springbok 15s. He's played for the Sharks. <laughs> and he's, okay. he, you know, he's... Uh, All right, okay, no let's just stop right there. Okay, so this is probably... <laughs> this, this is bordering on a sellable team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, um, uh, anyone, uh, any, any bids to, to... I think it was like the IPL, you know, any bids for, for players, I think we've got the best of them. Yeah, can that's I, okay. Can I just ask a question? Who approved this team? Normally well, a team would be approved by the president of the board or something. <laughs> Mr. Rugby H. Will <laughs> well, it, yeah, Mr. It, it H. was the approved by TV the president board. of the board. I, I, um, I am the president of the board. Oh, <laughs> if you approve that, fine. I'm the president of the surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, uh, look out there for villagers. Uh, Super 7s at villagers. As you heard, Morgan just run through the string of, of players that are going to come out and, and celebrate with us and just have a little bit of fun. Um, in fact, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Just nice to get out there and have... Uh, in fact, it's very nice for us to bring some of these guys who are generally club rugby players and playing uh, now in the Cape Rugby TV team and, and uh, just uh, maybe uh, show them a bit of um, gratitude for their, their uh, commitment to Western Province uh, club rugby. So I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Morgs? Yeah, no, it's exciting. I think it's really... I mean, the guys are really... You know, we're, on a, we're on a, all on a, on, a, on a chat group. And there's lots of banter going on and lots of guys really wanting to impress. And who knows, uh, if there's, uh, the Springbok scouts are out there, might, one or two of these guys might make the Springbok squad still. So who knows? Yeah. Of course, the um, Cape Rugby TV team is also semi-sponsored by Ama Boca Boca. And uh, we're wearing their jerseys on the day. So you're going to be able to check that out. Look out for those Ama Boca Boca uh, uh, jerseys. In fact, I'm going to give you a little bit later in the show. I'm going to give an opportunity to win the Ama Boca Boca ball. All right. This is a very good ball. It's been tested by Bram van Straat and various other super rugby uh, superstars. So the Amaboka ball, we're going to give uh, you guys, together with Alexa Flash Drive, a little bit later in the show. We're going to give you a chance to win the ball because uh, Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And uh, Evox is one of the sponsors to the Cape Rugby TV team, as well as Cape Rugby TV show. So if you want to win for yourself the product that the Stormers uh, use uh, most regularly, in other words, their favorite product, in fact, we're probably going to have to get some of this product for that Cape Rugby squad to make sure that the guys are all energized and make sure that they go and, 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 uh, and recover after the emerging team playing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so if you want to win for yourself uh, the Evox Synergy uh, Whey Protein, this is the favorite product of the Stormers, as well as a, a tray. Um, remember, that if you, this go, tray must go to somebody in uh, Club Rugby here in province. And the Shaker 600. Now, I did demo the Shaker 600 for you last week. Now, I'm not going to do the entire gig again because you've seen it work before. But in a nutshell, the Shaker 600 opens up and opens up. And there's all sorts of containers and magafters in here that you can put together. And you'll have a big shaker and put it in, put it in, close it up, shake it up. And that's your blender. All right, so the Shaker 600 up for grabs. This solves all your protein transport problems. A lot of people worry about how they're going to carry their food around with them during the day. Well, the Shaker 600 resolves all those problems. And of course, the Synergy Whey Protein up for grabs. 33280, that's the number that you're looking for. SMS your name and answer to 33280. Just uh, tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers and tell us what their favorite product is and you'll put yourself in the mix to win this product. All right, so this hamper up for grabs. Congratulations to last week's winner. Of course, lots of SMSs came in on the line. Dion Van Ikerk walks away with the uh, Synergy hamper. And uh, hopefully Dion will make sure that somebody from a club gets the tray. So congratulations, Dion. Well mm. done to you. And uh, we hope that uh, you're going to enjoy your Synergy Way protein. When we come back, we'll take a look at uh, what's happening in the world of rugby. A lot of international news. We'll be back with you guys in a sec. Hi, I'm Sam Galisi. I play for Western Province, and you're watching Cape Rugby TV. Time for us to look at some of the international rugby news now. Joe van Ikerk is up in the mix there. Uh, Bucky's Buddha and Joe van Ikerk in top form for Toulon, beating Glasgow 51 points 
to 28 as they help Toulon kick off their defense of the European crown with a crushing 51-28 victory over Glasgow Warriors on Sunday. World champions New Zealand overpowered host Australia to win their first Gold Coast IRB Sevens crown, 40 points to 19 in the final. That was on Sunday. Cross-code superstar Sonny Bill Williams said on Sunday that he will be returning to rugby union in 2015 after completing a second season with Australian National Rugby League champions, the Sydney Roosters. So we're looking forward to having Sonny Bill Williams back on the park. And then Jean de Jong's status as a doubtful starter for Saturday's Absa Curry Cup semi-final against the Golden Lions at DHL Newlands has increased the likelihood of Springbok captain Jean de Villiers moving away from his usual inside centre position in the DHL Western Province team for the game against the Lions at Western Province. And then Western Province under-21 scrum off. Ricky Schroeder has signed a two-year deal with the Lions. So shortly we'll be seeing, uh, or at least uh, I suppose from next season, we'll see Ricky Schroeder moving away from Western Province as he goes to put on those red and white hoops as he plays for the Lions in front of an empty stadium. Evox Advanced Nutrition, of course, uh, is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby. <laughs> make sure that you get your Evox supplements. If you are a uh, club rugby player, you need to make sure that you pack on the muscle, especially off-season. Right, let's take a look at some of the Curry Cup fixtures then, or at least some of the results over the weekend. And it was pretty interesting. The Sharks, in atrocious conditions, as we heard the commentators say several times, uh, losing to Western Province. Uh, Province very happy with that result, 17-13. The Cheetahs, 22-7 against the Bulls. And uh, the Lions beating Crick was 35 points to 28. Mr. H, if we look at some of those results, they're um, shocking conditions for Western Province, but they just managed to grind it out and they stuck to their guns. Their defense was very good. Yeah, one was very excited about, you know, the way they played and making sure that, you know, they will end uh, the, the league part unbeaten, which hasn't happened since... 2004 or something, you know, yeah. the Bulls did that last. But uh, it was great to see them in that kind of mood, you know. And Dwayne for Milan was, he was phenomenal. Now, I was listening to um, Nick Mallet on Supersport, and he said that this is a, that was a 10 million rand game. Obviously referring to the fact that this could be a, a semi-final and, and a home final. I mean, if, if Western Province win against the Lions um, this weekend, it's a, it's a home final. Yeah, that will bring in a lot of money. 10 million rand, is that the kind of revenue that one might see from, from a... I saw, from uh, I saw somewhere 13 million, but, you know, what's 3 million between friends? What's 3 million between friends? <laughs> yeah, so. But it just goes to show the kind of money that broadcasting can come into the game. You win the games, you get the home finals, not, and, and, and it's all about having the, the home game and then the broadcasting rights and, and SA Rugby, everybody contributing to the pot, so the home union really does score. Yeah, no, that, that is for sure. I would, I would just like to see, you know, and I don't know whether it happened this year, uh, that, you know, you look at the soccer, any competition they play in, there's eight million rand winner takes all, you know. Oh, you mean like a prize money, yeah, like an overall but prize money? Yeah, rugby, you know, we had at Vodacom once and then it stopped, you know. It just yeah, but I think what's happening now is that the brands are pushing their money into the ad space. They don't really want to sponsor the tournaments anymore because mm. what you're going to get back for it really doesn't make much difference. So the money's all going to the broadcasters. The money's all going to the rights. The money's all going to branding, sponsoring of players. And that's, that's big bucks. No, of course it is. But, yeah, you know, one, if you have the final, no, normally finals are not included in any of those season tickets or anything. So yeah. everybody must pay. So that, that's where yeah, the money yeah, comes yeah. in. So that's, that's of course, uh, a lot of ticket money that will hopefully be coming in for Western Province, uh, certainly at the semi-final, and I believe that they'll also be raising funds for Tinnis Lanier. So if you're going to the game at Newlands over the weekend, uh, try to make sure that you look out for those donation spots to support Tinnis Lanier. And um, I'm not sure what they're going to be doing at the final, but I know that at the semi-final, certainly they're going to be raising funds. And you'll recall that last week we uh, showed the highlights of the match, Avonwood, uh, um, where they had the legends, Northern's legends against the Western Province legends, also raising funds for, um, for Tennis Lanier. The Cheetahs uh, beat the Bulls convincingly. The Bulls' season has gone down. It once again goes to show you can be sh you got to kind of pick what you want to be strong at. You want to be strong in the Super 15 or do you want to be strong in the Curry Cup? 
maybe Western Province is the one team that kind of, and the Sharks to a certain degree, but mm. if you make that slight mistake, Morgs, you know, you're going to get into yourself in a situation you either got a very good curry, if, especially if you're losing your spring box. And the Bulls just haven't had it this year. Yeah, I think the Bulls, you know, they missed it somewhere along the line. I think they I mean, it, you know, hats off to them to actually putting up a good fight. I mean, they have lost a tremendous amount of Springboks and, you know, just to world-class players, to overseas and, you know, to retirement and all that kind of thing. So I think they're in a rebuilding phase. But, um, you know, obviously to not, make a, to not make a Curry Cup uh, semi-final is obviously something that, that won't go down nicely, you know, in the, in, the, in the boardrooms at Loftus. So I'm sure they'll be doing something to do it. But, I mean, now they've got, uh, they've still got the, the junior sides that are in the under-21 under semi-final. And I see the likes of Jan Serfontein and Andre Pollard are all going to be playing for the under-21. So from a Springbok, uh, from a Springbok Tri-Nations to an to a under-21 semi-final, it's a bit of a jump for, Andre, for um, Jan Serfontein. Yeah, none of those players particularly impress me. Um, but I suppose if they if they come cheap, you know, and you want to go play for another union and you don't want to play for Western <laughs> Province, then, <laughs> you know. Um, what the, the, but, but looking at the result there, I mean, one of the players that left Western Province was JJ Engelbrecht, went to go play for, for the Bulls. Mm. And I see uh, Adrian Strauss uh, sort of ran away from him over the weekend to go and score. Yeah, that was quite amazing. Has Adrian Fr uh, Strauss just got really quick or has JJ just got really slow? No, I think JJ wasn't going to risk tackling that big thing. <laughs> 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 oh, no, folks, we, we, we're, we're just having a little bit of fun there. Um, those are fantastic players. Jan Safrontein, I think, is a great talent. And uh, we do have some incredible Springbok talent out there. I must say, Willy Roos also kind of trying to, for me, I'm still trying to see where he's, where he's at. I'm trying to kind of determine his his style of playing, but he certainly is a cracker jack on the field. So a lot of guys there that, that have a lot of talent, but that is the life cycle of a team. You'll never have a team consistently up in the ranks. You know, we, 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 we had a close game against the All Blacks, and a lot of people said, oh, if we can't beat the All Blacks, how are we going to beat them in, uh, in the World Cup, which is in, what, 2015? But the fact is that in 2015, uh, New Zealand might not be the powerhouse that they are today. Some of those players are not going to be there. We... I don't know if we're likely to even see the Richie McCaws or the Kieran Reeds, um, the Dan Carters. It might be a t different team altogether. Maybe by then we're peaking in Australia, who are absolutely terrible right now, might, or even England, might at that stage, because it's a life cycle. You're not going to have Bucky's Buerta, Victor Matfield in your team Boy, forever, yeah. John Smith. You are going to have a time that they fall out, and then you have to kind of rebuild and rebuild, and then only you hit the peak. So the World Cup might be slightly different. But, Morgz, this is clearly an indication of, of the Bulls' life cycle. Yeah, I mean, the Bulls, yeah, it's exactly that, you know. I think where they, where they slightly may have missed it is they didn't have that second string guys that weren't getting enough game time at the times that they had their, their first string guys there. But, I mean, also, you know, the Curry Cup is there for to blood the new young guys that are in there. And the likes of JJ Engelbrecht, Jan Seventeen have all become Springboks, you know, in the time that they've been at the Bulls. So, they're clearly doing something right in terms of, you know, producing Springboks. I think it's just now, you know, that, that second tier that they need to work on. And I think they will definitely be doing that and spending a bit of money in the, in the off-season to get some, some quality young players. But, but should that not be a warning to coaches that are using international players that are not playing in the Curry Cup? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a contentious issue, that one. Um, you know, um, there's, there's, there's sort of, you know, there's different trains of thought. I personally believe that uh, the unions are the ones, you know, that are, that are paying the players and the best players must play, I think, you know. You want a packed stadium and you want a full house at Loftus or Newlands, wherever it is, then, you know, the, your big guns are got to come out and play when they're available. And so I think, um, you know, the Stormers or Western Province are doing that now. And if the Bulls have the opportunity, I'm sure they would have done the same. I mean, if you're always bringing international players back here to come play for the Super 15 and then they go back to Japan or Italy or wherever it is they're playing and then you, you, you dump them, basically they leave when the Curry Cup comes. What sort of message are you sending out to those Curry Cup players, Mustache? Yeah, but similarly, I mean, I can still understand those, you know, that bring guys in and out. But to bring a Springbok into under 21, you know, that to me is, it's not right. It, that guy has built up his career. He's right at the top now. Are you t who are you talking about now? Like Jan Scherpen, he said he's going to play under 21. And Yandre Pollock also. Yes. No, Andre Pollard is a, a played Curry Cup. He was in yeah. a Springbok, but Jan Seventeen was a Springbok, and oh, yeah. he's now playing sure. under so, twenty one so this like, weekend. You know, it's, it's so he's playing under twenty one. What? He's playing for the Bulls under twenty one side against Western Province, I think. Yeah, but they're they're obviously looking for a win at all costs. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Not, sure. know, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's good for the player's image, you know. And and okay, the union might say, but we pay him, so he must do what we say. You know, he's fifteen, whatever. But yeah, maybe. 
I would personally mean if I if he wasn't going to play for the Bulls and the Bulls don't have a chance and they're pretty much out or they are out um, and you've got this guy to play and he's under 21 why not put him in the team he's the best guy and yeah, anyway that might even help him be a better stormer I mean a better <laughs> uh, super 15 player next year yes folks yeah. we do think of things everything in, in stormers terms and then the Lions of course uh, beating Krikos and Krikos wheels have well and truly come off uh, Leisure Hotels is a keen supporter and sponsor of Cape Rugby TV. And when we come back from the ad break, we're going to give you an opportunity to win for yourself the Leisure Hotels prize. But before we do that, I'm a Boca Boca, all right? And you'll see the Cape Rugby TV team. If you go to Villages, you'll see the Cape Rugby TV 7 side um, in the I'm a Boca Boca jerseys. Now, if you'd like to win for yourself the Lexar flash drive, uh, let me just reach down here quickly. Um, and you would like to win for yourself a kicking tee, and I'm a Boca Boca kicking tee. There you see it on the screen right here. Okay, let me set it up for you as if I was, um, I don't know, name a fly off, folks. Bram van Straten. Okay, Bram van Straten would have probably positioned the ball like that. He would have put the ball like that. Um, another fly off. Dimitri. Dimitri, I think he would have positioned the ball like that as well. What uh, about Joe Peterson? Let's see that. Joe Peterson um, is more like that. Am I right? Hey, no, not that, not that. And um, how about um, and then of course back in the old days, the Oaks would kick the ball most <laughs> with the front with the heel. For the Welsh right. fly off does it. <laughs> the Welsh fly off, Garen Jenkins or Jones. Well, in fact, the entire Welsh team is Jones, so <laughs> don't really know. Okay, so folks, if you want to win for yourself the Amaboka Boka rugby ball as well as a Lexar flash drive, which we use uh, so uh, keenly in taking photographs of our club rugby players, all you need to do is SMS the word rugby. All right, rugby to 33280 and don't forget to include your name. The lucky winner will walk away with a Lexar flash drive as well as an Amaboka Boka ball. Okay, so great ball opportunity here for you. You can win the Amaboka ball as well as a Lexar flash drive and as I said, just SMS the word um, rugby to 33280. Don't forget to include your name. When we come back from the ad break, we'll take a look at some of the fixtures coming up in the uh, Curry Cup over the weekend, and we'll also uh, give you an opportunity to win that Leisure Hotel prize. So lots of more prizes up for grabs, as has been in the duration of the show. And once again, welcome to our DSTV viewers who have not experienced Cape Rugby TV as yet. We'll also touch on the Western Province Rugby Awards dinner, which is happening tomorrow night. We'll be back with you after the break. Well, the Western Province, Umugela, Cape Rugby TV. So quite a lot of club rugby action, at least not club rugby action, we carry cup action coming up, but uh, rounding up the club rugby season, as well as um, some of the players who of course played in the Super 15 and the Curry Cup will be happening at the Western Province Rugby Awards Dinner. That is this Thursday, and we touched on it last week. But uh, it's going to be held at Kelvin Grove, and I'm sure there's going to be um, uh, lots of interesting awards there, and we'll bring you highlights of the awards next week. But um, if we were to think, um, Morgz, if you had to take a wild guess, one of the, uh, the, one of the, the, the awards that we, we spoke about last year was going to be the Players' Player of the Year Award. Who would you say goes? To, I mean, if we let's take some shots, wild shots in the dark here. Um, the likes of Ivan Etzebeth, uh, well, he won it last year, so I won't give it to him again. I think uh, you know it's you a tough. Think, you've got to obviously think now as if you're a player. Yeah, it's a tough <laughs> decision, but I think head and shoulders, Dwayne from I think he's really sh this year yeah. come out and you know I mean besides his little injury that he had, injury hamper, the hamper that he had in the beginning of the year. And he's what come a out and performed unbelievably. What I a mean, game he had against the Lions. When on Saturday, he showed again. Just, he was just a powerhouse. I mean, on Saturday, you know, sometimes to come back from the Springboks and, and, and then play Curry Cup, it's sometimes hard to lift yourself. And he just showed that he plays every game at 150 miles an hour. And I mean, you know, he really is head and shoulders above any loose forward in the country at the moment. So, so your players play, your players don't... My players play of the year, Dwayne from Dwayne from No problem. Mr. H, anyone from your side? Skara. Skara and Tabernie? Oh, I've got a. Good a oh, that's I a. Think, that's I think this for the fact that I believe that he boxed way above his weight limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good call. I think. Uh, but remember, they also give Karika Player of the Year. They give yeah. all these things. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, no, I could fit in Anybody for yeah. Young Player of the Year? Yeah, that's, that's a tricky a, one. Yeah, that's we a tough one. Colby. Cheson Colby. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah, that's that's actually an easy one. Cheslin Colby, you yeah. You think Cheslin Colby, young player of the year? Yeah, he's definitely done well. His arm car. Oh, yeah, Scar and Benny, he, he falls into that category too. <laughs> falls into that category as well, yeah. Now, yeah. Where, do you, where do you put Dion? Dion Furry. 
Yeah, you know. Outstanding, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> look, at the amount of performers that Western Rams have had, or the Stormers have had this year, there really is six or seven different players that could fall under each category and win it, hands down. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, folks, remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV, or on Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV. Send us your uh, comments and tell us what you think. Uh, that Cape Rugby TV Facebook page gets very active. All right, you want to win for yourself a um, night's accommodation bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers here in Cape Town, then all you need to do is SMS the word uh, leisure, L-E-I-S-U-R-E, to double three two eight zero, and you can win yourself a night's accommodation bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. Let's take a look at last week's winner. Congratulations there to Shafiq Barawi. Shafiq walks away with a night's accommodation bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. And I'm sure Shafiq is going to enjoy himself thoroughly as uh, I'm positive that he's going to go uh, there with a little romantic weekend night of accommodation, bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. Okay, so semi-final fixtures this weekend. Of course, uh, it is Western Province up against the Lions and uh, the Sharks up against the Cheetahs. So this is going to be a cracker jack uh, match. Western Province taking on the Lions. I'm sure the Lions are going to still be hurting a little bit after their last uh, loss. And then the Sharks against the Cheetahs at Durban. Um, Morgs, if we look at that match there, the Sharks against the Cheetahs, they're playing in Durban. Um, and, and I mean, the rain really, it was virtually impossible to tell what the, who was up, who was down in that Western Province versus the Sharks match. What do you make of that? If there's one team that can beat the Sharks away from home, then it's the Cheetahs. I think, you know, the Cheetahs are, are, are some, there's some, some, clever, some clever guys down there in Bloom and they'll know how to, you know, how to counter the likes of the Springboks that are coming back for the Sharks and all that kind of thing. So if there's one team that can beat the, the, beat the Sharks, it'll be the Cheetahs. But having said that, I'm still going to go with the Sharks. I think just, you know, with their sp returning Springboks and the likes of Francois Stein, who's CYC, has now returned back to the, to the starting lineup for the Sharks. You know, there's a little bit of stability there. And, um, and I think they'll do really well. So I'm, I'm calling a, a Western Province Sharks final down at Newlands next week. Western Province Sharks final. Uh, it, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. As long as we win our home game, Western Province, yeah. we've got a home final. Yeah. So it's not going to really make any yeah. difference. Sharks yeah. or cheetahs. Sharks yeah. or cheetahs, not going to make any difference. Um, but it, it, it was a wet game. I mean, uh, the other guy that stood out for me, uh, head and shoulders or closest to Dwayne and it's probably the kind of position you don't really get an accolade was Stephen Kitzhoff yeah. I mean he actually people didn't notice it but he completely dominated Yanni Duplessis you know for a, for a junior and I think what he can still play in the 21 as well yeah. um, if, if I'm not mistaken but Stephen Kitzhoff has really also stepped up he had a bit of a rough patch in the beginning of the season but for him to come out and we, we spoke about Bismarck Duplessis and Yanni Duplessis and uh, and Beast, Beast uh, Tendam Tarira Tendam Tawarira um, the Zimbabwean, who is a, uh, makes up a formidable uh, Sharks front row. Stephen Kitsoff and uh, the guys come out there and they just dominate. Yeah, look, he's definitely one of the, I mean, last week, you know, we spoke about the unsung heroes of the team. And I think he, Stephen Kitsoff, often it's, you know, the number one and three or and two. You know, we spoke about Skara now, but generally it's the one and three that are the unsung heroes of the side. And I mean, to, to lay a platform, you know, that the backs can work off uh, against, the, against the front row that he played against. I mean, you know, Stephen can definitely, you know, put a feather in his cap there so if he can do the same performance in another two weeks and uh, i don't see why we can't lift the curry cup and then uh, finally western province up against the lions mr h quickly um anything that you think that the western province should be looking out for well i don't know why uh, the lions never bring really brits on right from the start yeah you know he looks like a lion with a hair of his but he <laughs> plays brilliant rugby and he's always i don't know yeah, but look it's a semi-final. Yeah. Anything can happen. It's 50-50. Don't knows? take any chances. All right. Quick Super Bowl predictions. Uh, Morgs, Western Province Lions. Western Province, seven. Mustache. 20, Western Province. Western Two. Province by 20. I'll go with that one as well. Western <laughs> Province by 20. The Sharks <laughs> and the Cheetahs uh, at, uh, in Durban on, on Saturday. Uh, Morgs, Sharks, Cheetahs. Oh, I said on radio, uh, Cheetahs. I've probably got to stick to it. Eh? I'm going to go Cheetahs, one. Stage? Sharks 5. Sharks 5. I'm going to go with Sharks by 11. Those are my Super Brew predictions. They've been shocking all week, all season. In fact, <laughs> I don't even bother copying them. Remember, folks, we are on Facebook and jump on there or on Twitter. If you're watching the show right now, send us a hello tweet at Cape Rugby TV. Um, Mugs, we'll see you uh, next week, same time, same place. Of course, we'll be bringing highlights from the awards ceremony. Have a nice rugby weekend.
Yeah, I look forward to it. I'm going to have a busy weekend. And if anyone's <laughs> looking for some real, some real uh, hot action, then come down to Villages. And Mr. H, I'm assuming that you're going to be on the side of the field at Newlands on Saturday. Oh, a lot of games for you to be <laughs> paying attention to. Yeah, but I hope he's coming back in one piece, you know, after playing all those matches and having all that fun after the Well, seventh. you know, he's, he's got uh, duty to perform. I'm not going to say for which team, though. <laughs> 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 right, folks, that's a wrap of Cape Rugby TV. We hope you've had yourself a fantastic uh, hour enjoying rugby in Western Province with us. And uh, that uh, if you're on DSTV, you're starting to get a flavor for the show. We bring you community rugby with a flavor of professional rugby. And, uh, well, we try and bring you as much entertainment as possible. And uh, hopefully you're appreciating what club rugby is about because it is the future of the senior rugby sides in South Africa. Once again, uh, remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV and on Twitter at Cape Rugby TV. Have yourself a fantastic rugby weekend. We'll see you at the Villagers Sevens on Saturday next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.